this episode you're about to view is based on an early alpha build of some new projects we're working on here at Kabam. Things are still at a work in progress stage and subject to change, so keep that in mind while you're watching. We hope that you like what you see so far in this new format for the Summoner Showdown 2021. Welcome to Summoner Showdown 2021, where summoners get to showcase their skills for the world to see. And now we have our winners from our three qualifier matches of Nameless King Groot, Nameless Scarlet Witch, and Nameless, say it with me now, Hyperion! Now, each region's winners get to meet in the battle realm to find out who reigns supreme in their respective region. Then, they get to move on to the final stage. This is Summoner Showdown Semi-Finals. To decide who moves on to the finals, each region will run a series competition where their three winners will go head to head in a brand new fast paced 1v1 competitive experience built on the foundation of last year's Summoner Showdown. Let's check it out. Similarly to last year, all three semi-finalists from each region will face off against each other in a series format, putting their brains and their thumbs to the test. The winner of each region's semifinals will fight for the title, the trophy, and the glory of Summoner Showdown 2021. Alright, now, while this year's Summoner Showdown is similar to last year, there are some key differences. First off, with the new format, all aspects are being played in-game, which gives you a very fast-paced and exciting way to play. And there's some new rules going on here in the way that we score. So John, my main man, take it away. Thanks, Dave. I'm super excited for the Summoner Showdown 2021 format. Let's go over how you get points in this new mode. So here we have three main areas that we're going to be scoring you on. The first and the biggest is going to be Defender HP remaining. This is where the brunt of your score is gonna come from, so you're always gonna make sure to push that opponent down and KO them if possible. Secondly, we wanna see some aggressive play coming out of our players this year, so we're actually rewarding them for having quicker fights. That means the more aggressive you play, the faster you get that opponent down, the more points you'll earn. And lastly, if you KO the opponent, we also have attacker HP remaining. That means after you successfully KO the opponent, the more health that you have, the more points you'll get. So with all three of these combined, this is how we'll be deciding who wins each round of the Summoner Showdown semifinals and finals. This year, each Summoner will create a deck and recruit 30 champions to use in the Summoner Showdown tournament. When ready, they enter into a picks and bans phase where each summoner will ban three champions from their opponent's deck. However, this remains hidden from their opponents until all bans are chosen on both sides for that round. From there, we enter into a snake draft, where a single champion pick starts at the beginning of the draft with the first summoner and ends with a single choice with the second summoner. This single choice will pull from three random selections out of their respective decks. Now, in between, both summoners will alternate three rounds of picks and choose two champions at a time, pulling from five random options out of their remaining deck to populate their hands. Now, they've got to make their selections within the time limit or risk a forced random pick. Keep in mind, their chosen champion can be used for either attack or defense, so they've got to choose wisely. Once chosen, unselected champions return to their respective decks and we enter into the battle phase. For a single round, the player that selected their champion first in the draft will go first. Each summoner will take a turn to place their defensive champion, followed by both setting their respective attackers. Once a champion is used from the summoner's hands, they can no longer use that champion in any future defense or attack placements for the rest of the match. From there, the match begins and each summoner will enter into their respective fights. For each round, scoring will be based on the defender's hit points removed, time remaining, and the attacker's remaining health. The first summoner to take the best of three rounds wins the match. From there, 
The summoner with the best set of matches will be the winner of the Summoner Showdown semifinals for their region. That skilled summoner will find themselves among the best of the best of their respective regions, waiting to take the throne in the finals of this year's Summoner Showdown. You don't want to miss it. Welcome to Summoner Showdown 2021, and I am back here in the house with my main man, John. How you doing, bro? I'm doing awesome. Super excited to be back here in the semifinals again. Last year, we had a super, super tight contest with the Asia and Oceania semifinals, and I'm hoping that this year it's just as close. Oh, I think it will be. And we have our three semifinalists and had a chance to catch up with them to ask them how they feel about being in the Summoner Showdown. So first off, from Korea, we've got Apto. Let's see what he had to say. 저는 대한민국에서 아시아 지역을 대표하고 있는 압도입니다. 네, 오메가 레드를 제일 좋아합니다. 강력한 데미지와 유틸리티가 되게 좋고요. 또 게임 플, 게임 스타일도 이제 플레이 스타일도 저와 맞는 것 같아요. 나는 우승을 뒷받침할 경험과 스킬이 있기 때문에 2021년 서머너 쇼다운 챔피언이 될 것입니다. All right, very cool hearing from Apto. He took down Nameless King Groot with Proxima Midnight, which is a secret favorite of mine, or maybe it's not so secret, but you might remember him from last year. He is a returning player, and he had a super memorable fight having Guillotine 2099 versus Annihilus, a masterclass to be seen, absolutely. Yeah, super excited to see Apto back here again. Absolutely amazing performance from him last year. Just barely missing out on the finals, and he's definitely coming back with a vengeance to try and get in those finals this year. But, of course, he's not the only one competing for that spot in the finals. We also have, coming out of Singapore, Yan Daos. Hi, I'm Yan Daos from Singapore, and I will be representing Asia and as senior in this year's Summer the Showdown. My favorite champion in the game will be Thor, the, or, uh, the original Thor. Uh, when, I, when I use him, I get to learn his abilities. I love his armor bricks, the, the stackable armor bricks, which can do huge damage to him. I just want to tell my competitors that watch out for beginner's luck. Awesome hearing from Yan Daos there. A new face here in the semifinals and the Summoner Showdown for us. Going up against a fierce competitor like Apto is not going to be easy, but I think he can show his skills here. He's already shown it in the qualifiers, taking down Nameless Scarlet Witch with Ghost, and I'm super excited for him to show those skills off even more. Oh yeah, and we have one more semifinalist here from Singapore. We've got Satsui no Hado. Yo, my dudes, I am Satsui no Hadu from Singapore, and I am representing the Asia and Oceania region. Favorite champion has got to be Ghost. I own a lot of matches with her. She does huge damage, and she's pretty easy to use, actually. You just got to get used to how to phase properly with her, and the rest is what they would call history. May we put on a good show for all the viewers, and of course, may the best summoner win. Awesome hearing from Satsui no Hado. Now he fought nameless Hyperion with community favorite She-Hulk. Now that name might sound familiar as he's also returning from last year, and he had super close fights with Apto, but he's looking forward to fighting him once again. He's also an MCOC YouTuber, and he tutors in his spare time, preparing students for their exams. Which makes me think, he's ready for this test. I couldn't agree more. All three of our competitors are looking amazing here. Awesome to see Apto and Satsui back. But of course, don't sleep on the new phase here, Yan Daos. All three of them coming and ready to fight for that final spot. Oh, absolutely. And speaking of which, it looks like they're ready for their picks and bans in round one. All right, we've got Satsui here up against Yan Daos. Uh, and we've got a quick ban already set up. We've got uh, Doom and we have Immortal Abomination. Yeah, I uh, totally like the Doom ban here. I think that's a great option to try and just get rid of. Uh, super powerful on both the attack and the defense side. Uh, we see the Penny Parker ban coming in here. Another great option. Uh, I think we've seen her ban almost every series uh, and every match. So yeah, 
uh, totally agree with that one as well. I think all three of these bands are strong. Uh, Mortal Abomination, also a very versatile attacker and defender. So if you don't have a great answer to poison, definitely want to get him out of there. Absolutely. And not only is Doom a great attacker and defender, but he, he has a very, very powerful set of power control and power mm -hmm. steel at the same time. Yeah, and that power control is something that we've seen a lot of value in uh, with this node setup. Uh, spite giving the opponent a ton of power, you got to be really careful with it. So, um, yeah, I, I totally agree. It's just like top to bottom. He's got tons of power in his kit. Um, and we see Apocalypse, Annihilus, and Penny Band out on Yandao's side. Um, Apocalypse, again, another one of those Jack of All Trades character. Great on attack and defense. Annihilus, very tricky defender. And Penny on both sides here. Absolutely. So, uh, what do we have going on here? Looks like he's going between uh, a Terax and a Dragon Man pick here. Yeah, um, both Terex and Dragon Man are both uh, very versatile and they can be used as attackers if needed, but are also both very powerful defenders and already have lots of power gain. Going up against that Spite node, going to be even tougher to deal with. Uh, love the Terex pick here. Pretty sure this is the first time we've seen him. Uh, and Absolutely. I think he's an amazing defender, especially on a node like Spite, keeping that rock field up even longer, even more damage onto the opponent. All right, and we've got another favorite here coming up here with Bishop. We've seen a lot of that as well uh, mm -hmm. with Yandao's on the other side with Arcus and Dr. Voodoo. Have we seen any Arcus yet? I don't think we've seen that either. Yeah, I don't think we have seen Arcus yet. I'm a little surprised on that one. Last year, he was a very popular pick. He's a very tough character to deal with, um, especially now that Doom is banned out. Doom is arguably the best option for Arcus, uh, especially in a node where he's going to already be gaining power from Spite. Uh, so that's a very powerful character, but... Um, we do see the Mangog also picked on Setsui's side, another very powerful power gain character. Yeah, I see. And uh, now we've got a Ghost and a Claire. So it looks like uh, we've got some attack options there uh, mm. on uh, on Satsui's side. Uh, it looks like he has a pretty solid roster uh, with enough diversity to uh, to put a dent uh, in Yandao's... Yandao's Huh. I didn't get that plural right, but that's all, that is all good. Yeah. He's trying to damage his finals chance here. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Yandaos has got a good mixture here. He's got a lot of good defenders. Uh, probably looking to pick up a couple of good attackers here. Uh, we do see the Bishop and the Hitmonkey and the Warlock. Yeah, so he goes with the Warlock and the Hitmonkey. Uh, yep. Both really great defenders and attackers. Um, definitely better attackers than defenders for the most part, um, but can still trip up somebody, especially on a tough node combination like this. Um, curious to see if Satsui goes for some more attacker focus here or tries to stack the deck on more defenders. Um, OG Vision, Mysterio, She-Hulk, all very powerful that we've seen so far. Sasquatch, another favorite in this uh, format as well. So very curious yep. to see. He's got a lot of good options here. Yeah, I think, uh, oh, what you went with the Mysterio. I was thinking he was going to go with the Vision. We've seen a lot of really mm -hmm. great plays with Vision here. Uh, but, oh, no, he changed it up at the end. He still has a few more seconds left. Is he going to lock mm -hmm. that in or is he going to switch this up? I don't know. Yeah, just looking at what uh, Yandao's has here, there isn't a lot of need for him to pick the Vision. Um, he's not going to be able to deal with Mysterio or, or Arcus very well with the, the Vision, so loses a yeah. little bit of value there. Um, I do like the, the She-Hulk, very versatile, can deal with a lot of really tough fights, can deal with the Hitmonkey if you need it, and the Sasquatch to bolter out more of that roster. Um, yeah, curious to see how Yandao's is going to answer back on this one. Um, doesn't really need the Venom here. There's no evade characters on the opponent's side here. Uh, Mojo, great defender. Uh, definitely a solid option for even if you need to taking down a buff heavy opponent. Um, but well, that's what's surprising yeah. is that Mojo is even available at this point. He's been banned in almost every mm -hmm. uh, series that we've seen. So I think this is going to be one of our few chances to see Mojo in action. Yeah, actually, I totally agree with that. Uh, it's a great point. We've seen Mojo banned or not been in the deck for almost everything so far. So, yeah, definitely going to keep our eyes peeled to see if he comes up and um, how he fares if he does. Uh, we see the Terex coming out for Setsui. I uh, love that pick. Really, really good option. Not a lot of great ways for Yandaos to deal with that. Um, yeah, I don't even know what I would pick here. Maybe, yeah, Hitmonkey. Oh, oh yeah, okay. that's his defender, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah, that. that's a defender. Yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. defender. He, he's tough. He's tricky if you don't pay attention. There's already so many things to pay attention to. Uh, yeah. You can definitely uh, get one of his auto evades and get uh, <laughs> and get a return attack right in the face. 
-hmm. So uh, let's see how that uh, how that works out. Yeah, we saw the the Doc Voodoo picked for Yandao's there. Yep. Uh, I love that. That's a great pick. The the health is going to help keep him topped up. He's going to be able to nullify his buffs offs and power control him if he needs to. Uh, and then we see Ghost as the final pick here to go up against Hitmonkey. Uh, that's another great great option there for Satsui. He's going to be able to deal with Hitmonkey's evade if it comes up, as long as he's able to keep those critical strikes going. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, let's see how he handles the the phase play here, uh, and see if the AI plays along. Yeah, definitely uh, Ghost working better with the more aggressive AI. He is going to have to watch out for this fight here. Being uh, a character that will almost always have a buff on them, whether it's the precision from Dexterity or Cruelty and Fury from her base kit, that does mean Hitmonkey is going to be gaining power almost the whole fight, so he's going to have to watch out for those really nasty specials. Oh, it looks like Hitmonkey was playing uh, along. Oh, so, oh, he took a couple Spoke of hits there. Spoke a little there. bit too soon on that one. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. a little bit. Yeah, and Hitmonkey, a really punishing defender too. He has those guaranteed crits in his kit, so you really got to watch out. Oh, no, oh. he lands a parry there, and he gets it reflected from Super Masochism. Uh, that power bar is just slowly going up, and he's going to get the cruelty too. Oh, this is going to be tough. Can you live through this special three? Oh, that's gonna be a tough one, man. He took uh, it took a lot of damage there. I'm not yeah. sure he's gonna yeah, survive that. Yeah, looks like that. he's gonna and, go uh, down. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A tough matchup. I think um, Ghost a great pick for dealing with Hitmonkey's evade, but has a very hard time dealing with Spite. So the node kind of getting away from him a little bit there. Yeah, I, I think what really kind of buried this was uh, that uh, that parry on Super Masochism uh, that yeah. really took him out of the fight, and I think that took him out of his concentration zone as well. Yeah, and concentrating in nerves is a big thing, so we're going to have to uh, check to see if Yandaos can handle that this time. All right, let's check it out. All right, so we see that regen on Voodoo going off right away. Um, wow, what lands the parry? Actually, yeah, he's, he's safe to do that a little bit here because of the... Uh, um, uh, Voodoo's passive ability, signature ability. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> uh, so much damage in the corner here. Uh, he's gonna be really careful about this rock stacks. Hitting into it here, he's just gonna be keeping, keep getting more and more power. Looks like he does have Mystic Dispersion though, so he gains a ton of power off that special one. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, let's see if he can maybe make up some of the difference here with an SP3, but uh, that, that barely tacked off any damage at all. Oh, uh, he's gonna really there. have to step it up. Yeah, and that's yeah. one of the it's one of the staples of Terax right there is <laughs> being able to clip you on your dexes. Oh yeah, he has a little bit of that extra reach with the big axe. Uh, he does have the power drain on him here, which will help keep Terax in, in uh, check a little bit more. Um, gets a power gain buff here though, so he's gonna have to watch out. He will be fighting against Spite for quite some time now. Uh, maybe looking for another special one here to try and get some more buffs off and get more power back with that Mystic Dispersion. Uh, you can see here Terax's power is slowly trickling down thanks to um, Spite giving him extra. And yeah, that's a really tough fight there. Yeah, absolutely. But that's a really great pick uh, to keep him topped up with Spite because you're always <clears> going to be running away and he's going to run you down to the wall. That is one heck of a fight. And that's a really great pick. That's a, that's a very strategic pick. I didn't even think of that. But now yeah. I am. Yeah, really great pick by Satsui there. Uh, super smart picking Terex on the Spite node. Uh, gonna be curious to see we if we gonna be curious to see if we have more of that going into the future. All right, well let's see how they fared. So getting into the the round two here, um, pressure is on. Let's see what Yandao's picks as his defender. Uh, can he answer back? He has a lot of good options here. I like the Mojo. I like the Mysterio. Even the Arcus is also a very, t very powerful defender. Um, yeah, really a lot of options for him to pick from here. Uh, what do you think of Dave? Ah, uh, man. It, well, he took it right down to the line here. Uh, but I think a Mojo pick is, uh, is in the cards. Yeah, I, I totally agree there. I, I think a Mojo pick is... Definitely what I would be picking uh, on this one. Like we had talked about before, we haven't been able to see him the entire time so far. So definitely a lot of value in that character from uh, most of our players and having him open here as a defender and uh, Setsui not really having a great option to try and deal with it. I do think fair is very well for him. Yeah, absolutely. And he's very, very difficult. Uh, and that would probably be my play here if I was already down by one. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, definitely want to come out swinging. Try to bounce back as hard as you can. Come out with uh, whatever your your strongest characters are to make sure that you can claw back into it and maybe um, make this a round of three. Yeah, oh, time will tell. Only time will tell. <laughs> and he goes with the Mysterio there, Mysterious. also a great option, um, a very powerful defender, and not a lot of great options for Setsui to try and deal with it. So yeah, I like that option a lot. Yeah, I, I am with you on that. Uh, it was either that or or the Mojo pick, but uh, as we've seen in this series, Mysterio has been quite the problem for a lot of players. Another one of those characters that benefits very heavily from the Spite node, um, so I do like that, but I also love this Bishop pick here. Very tough to deal with. He does have the Warlock, which should help him quite a bit. Uh, it should be a very favorable matchup as long as he doesn't throw those heavy attacks. Uh, but Bishop's still not it. a Absolutely. defender to sleep on. Yeah, great pick. Love the Warlock pick there. Um, that tech matchup makes it much easier there. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, that's... Uh, so I, it looks like he could have gone two ways. One, he, he could have gone with She-Hulk here, uh, but it looks like he's going for Black Widow. Do you think he's going to run right into her poison immunity uh, mode and try to just hang yeah. out there? Uh, I feel like that's definitely the play here with this Clairvoyant Black Widow. Uh, Mysterio is poison immune, which means that Black Widow is going to be gaining power whenever she throws a medium two or a special one or a heavy. So she'll be able to circumvent a lot of uh, the regular gameplay stuff of needing to build. And Mysterio is having a big problem here with um, uh, being so annoying on spite and having unblockable specials. Maybe able to control that a little bit more with the power steal that she has on her special two. Oh, and he's taking a lot of chip damage there. Uh, just trying to bait out that heavy yeah. and uh, do some counter attacks, but that's kind of costing him there. Yeah, uh, curi I, I, I'm curious about this strategy of throwing these longer combos into block. Um, giving the opponent more power is always scary because something like this can happen where he's now he's got his decks on and he's really relying on hopefully the AI throwing a special attack. Ooh, no, and he gets the no. special three. No, nope, he just, just hangs out, game. man. Yeah, that's a, a really rough one. Let's see if he'll live it. This Mysterio Special 3 does a ton of damage. Oh, it's looking close. Oh, wow. Just barely gets him there. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's a tough one there. Uh, that's a super tough matchup. Mysterio, a very tough defender to deal with on the spite node. But uh, I do like the Claire pick. Just a little bit uh, unlucky on the AI there. Yeah, and I think you nailed it. Uh, that was a, a, a strategy that probably wasn't the best to be hitting into block while he's building up power. Uh, I guess he thought maybe he would be able to get that SP2, but that wasn't in the cards. Yeah, unfortunate, but great try. And uh, let's see how Yandos answers back. All right, so we got Warlock going into Bishop here. Uh, so one thing that's really tricky with Warlock is uh, he will have a buff the entire fight, which means Bishop will always be gaining power from that spite node. Yeah, and one of the great things here about uh, Warlock is that uh, that extra reach, and uh, Bishop does hit short, uh, but it does give you a chance to sidestep, and he pushed him into special three. Unfortunate, yeah. but maybe he can survive here. Yeah, something that's really tough with Warlock here is he has very conditional power control. He does live that special attack. Warlock has some juicy armor and the class advantage here. Um, so now that he's got that infection on, uh, it doesn't look like he's running the Resonate Mastery, but he will be able to power control him now that he has the special two and the armor breaks on. You can see Bishop's power going down here. Um, but yeah, he just gets opened up again. Yeah, that's unfortunate. He's going in and uh, we're going to get a little bit more power control here. Uh, so maybe yeah. he can get control of the fight. Yeah, you know what? Actually, that's a, a, a really good strategy I saw him doing there is hitting into Bishop's block to get him to trigger more regens. Uh, it's unfortunate there. does take a combo at the end, but I really loved uh, watching him hit into block there to get Bishop to trigger those regens, which while the infection is active means Warlock will power drain you. Um, so some really smart play there. Just unfortunate on um, maybe getting clipped a few more times than he would have liked. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so looks like uh, he does win that round, though. He took more HP than the opponent, gets a higher score. So that means we're going to go into a round three here. All right, let's see what we got. Who's going to come out on top? I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like it's got to be the Mangog or the Sasquatch here. I think the, the Sasquatch could work very well here as well. He doesn't have a good answer to healing. Maybe the Mojo, um, but the, the Mangog, a great defender as well. 
no way to deal with that power at all. Uh, so yeah, both of those options were great for Tatsui, and I feel like you've got to go for the Mojo here. Uh, he does he does have She-Hulk. Uh, that is a doable fight, but not an easy one, especially on the Spite Node. Um, all right, good call on the Mojo, man. That's exactly uh, where he go and he went right with uh, She-Hulk. That is the class advantage, and that will be a very interesting fight. Yeah, uh, fortunately, I'm sure he does have his crit masteries on, uh, which means he could have a little bit of an extra hard time. Um, but yeah, the Falcon into the Mangog here, I really feel like he just didn't have a lot of good options. So um, it's yeah. just going to come down to raw gameplay here, which one of these guys can squeak out the extra points on these really tough fights. Yeah, this one's, uh, I've I got to imagine that all their nerves are pretty uh, are pretty shaken right now because this is this is playing for the finals. Oh, it takes a hit right there at the beginning of the fight. Yeah, probably pay a parry out of habit. We see it all the time. Um, just gets clipped by the, the damage reflect there. But some huge damage coming out of She-Hulk. He got that fury. Um, so he's just going to need Mojo to play with him a little bit. Hopefully beat out some specials. Uh, gotta be careful. Oh, he's got a special oh, two here. Yeah. Uh, oh, he gonna... no, he's gonna get to the special three. Oh, oh he, he gets, gets the special it. two, but he gets clipped. Oh man, that was basically an SP three. It was so yeah. close. So close. Oh no, he's stuck in the corner. He's gotta get rid of that dexterity. Wow, he gets the special attack just in time, but he ends the buff, which means he gets the degen and he gets comboed, getting stuck in the corner there. That is a yeah. rough spot to be. Yeah, I think he. I think he might have. Uh, uh, he, he might have just stopped, just uh, hesitated, just a little bit there, because it looks like he got a, a, a successful sidestep and just mm -hmm. didn't return attack in time. And Mojo was just a little bit faster on there. Yeah, very close stuff. Um, very very tough fight and a lot of pressure coming into these semifinals. But great job by them there. And um, yeah, it's uh, ball is in Yandao's court now. Can he finish his fight to take this series? Yeah, he's got to do, uh, man, you know what? I, I'm not even going to call him. Let's just see what he does. This is a very tough fight. This is a, by no means an easy one. Uh, no way to deal with Mangog's power gain and no way to deal with his unstoppable or unblockable if he gets to those. You really don't want to bait Mangog's special one because he's going to build up his reach, which is going to make him unstoppable. And you don't want to bait out his special two because it's impossible to dex. So you're just left in a horrible position here. Uh, very well, tough lucky matchup. For him. Yeah, lucky for him, he was locked on, so he didn't run into that problem. Uh, but uh, I don't know if he can keep that up. Oh, he does dex the start of the hit there, actually keeping him alive. Great intercept there. Um, but yeah, very, very tough matchup here. Another special two. Oh, can he get some extra damage? And great special two from him there. Oh, um, special three here. It's looking like uh, he may have uh, may have beaten him on that health threshold here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's looking pretty close. Manga going to close this one out. Big special three from our big demon boy. And, uh, oh, it's looking very close. Let's look at the stats. Does look like Setsui will take this one. Uh, he takes the third round there, which means he will take this series. Okay, looks like Setsui takes that one two to one. And we have our next matchup here with Yandows versus Apto. So we've got Apto against Yandows here. Um, yeah, we saw some really interesting picks in that last series with the Terex pickup. Uh, Curious to see if he gets some love in the pick and ban here. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Dave? Yeah, absolutely. I think after seeing his performance uh, and seeing what a monster he is, I think that's probably the first ban that I would put down. Yeah, for sure. He's definitely a tough defender. We uh, we do see the penny here. Uh, totally agree with that one. That's a great ban. Um, super annoying defender to deal with, as well as a powerful attacker. Um, yeah, I think I don't think we've seen her get into a game yet because she's just been valued too highly uh, and totally new fresh face in the contest as well i uh, see the ebony ma ban here what do you think about that one dude oh well you know how i feel about ebony ma i think he's great on attack and defense in this series uh he works really really well with this node uh and to uh, echo back on what you were talking about with penny that, that if anyone were ever get to a special two i think that'd be lights out that's such a difficult one to dex yeah i don't even know if you'd be able to do it very tough stuff and some big incinerate damage we see the annihilist ban there is aptos last ban um not going for glory again on that one doesn't want to try and yeah, do this absolutely. super tough matchup don't blame him <laughs> and then we see uh, dark hawk as his first pick here 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, hey, maybe he just really likes the song, you know? Who knows? <laughs> it is, yeah, definitely a certified banger. Also has those uh, Impossible the Deck Special 1, uh, Auto Block and Miss. He's a very tough defender already on his own. Uh, but not the only robot we see here. We see the Dragon Man coming up for Yan Dao's, another very tough power game character. Yeah, absolutely. And we also have the Mephisto pick here, which can be a really, really dangerous combo with this node here. Because you have to yeah. stay away, but you also have to get in. And uh, taking that damage, not the easiest thing. Yeah, we see the Immortal A-Bomb and the Falcon come here. So far, no answer to the power gain coming out from Yandao's side. Um, so hopefully he can get something coming in soon to help him deal with those. Uh, because, yeah, oh, there he has it. He gets the vision. Um, but uh, Very looks good. like Yandos has got some more tricky defenders here with the uh, Arcus and the Apocalypse. Yeah, and I'm really liking the Modok pick here. Uh, that special one can cause a lot of problems if you're not paying attention. Yeah, and on this Super Masochism, going to make it much harder to deal with the auto block not being able to reliably parry, which means you will most likely be running into that auto block more. Uh, and, you know, could slip up against those specials too. They can be a little tricky to dex. Um, yeah. Curiosity. Okay, so we see Claire and we see a uh, Vision coming out on Yandao's side too. Uh, Vision definitely got a lot of uh, power and a lot of value against this Spite node. Um, so I think that's a great pickup on both sides here. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a, a new fresh face here uh, with that Overseer. So uh, yeah. excited to see if he actually makes it into the matches. Yeah, I would love to see an Overseer pick here. Definitely a powerful defender, especially when you're running into a tricky node combination. Um, but yeah, some great attacker and defender picks on both sides here. And we see the Darkhawk come in round one for Abdo. Nice. Yeah, I can't wait to see that in action. Yeah, uh, that special one is going to be super tricky. The spite node actually might come out to help you in that situation. You got to be careful with it. You're not going to be able to use vision as an answer either because when you knock him down, he'll be auto blocking you. Um, so, yeah, definitely a very tricky to defender to deal with. Um, maybe you could use the Arcus's cold snap and, um, sorry, not cold snap, armor shatter to try and deal with him because he is a robot. Um, but still not a great uh, matchup there. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit tough, man. Uh, but I am curious to see how uh, anyone would handle uh, his phase mm -hmm. because that that does allow him to build up, but you can't really hit him. Mm -hmm. And it will just cause more problems for you. Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see. Oh, yeah. and there's the Mephisto pick. There it is. Yeah. Okay, so love the Mephisto now we've got, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm with you on that. And Yandaus has his attacker. Like, who would you think? As an attacker here, I probably got to go with Arcus, and hopefully you can get to that special two and get the uh, the armor shatter on Darkhawk so you can try and deal with him. Uh, maybe just heavy spam him in the corner once you get there, taking a little page out of Medusa's book. Does look like that's what he's going to be going with. But yeah, definitely going to be yep. careful against that spite node. Oh, very, very, very good. Uh, rush over to that incinerate mode and uh and uh, take care of that mephisto man mm -hmm. yeah yeah you gotta be careful you don't want to be applying too many of those incinerates yourself don't want to give him the aura of incineration but also uh it's really going to be the only way that you can um survive yeah it would not just <laughs> have your entire face melted off so yeah we'll have to see how this pans out for him yeah. oh man Taking all right so he's got aura of incineration yeah, yeah. he is Okay, great job waiting it out there. Hopefully he'll get the uh, special one out. Um, yeah, the, actually, the soul imprisonment is helping him out there. He's able to deck safely and not have the uh, um, dexterity buff land on him. Uh, great job so far. Gets into that incinerate mode, meaning he will be safe. He's also be will be gaining a uh, ton of bonus power from uh, Mephisto's immunities there. Uh, this, this pick is actually looking really great to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and building up those charges so fast. I mean, he built that up in just a matter of seconds. Yeah, no kidding. He was uh, at that special two in no time, but does look like Mephisto oh, might get to that special three. Hits. Wow, he, great job of just getting the extra damage in here. Uh, I, I like that uh, play a lot. Not a lot of great chances for him to... Um, or not taking the chance of just dying straight up to the special three, making sure he gets that damage in first. Uh, it does look like he'll live, but... Um, yeah, great choice there. 
yeah, that's a, that's a really great play. Uh, he actually survived, which is really great. I wasn't expecting him to survive, but he did. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see if he can shake out. Oh, oh just clipped in the corner. I don't know if you're going to be able yeah. to dex that Mister or that uh, Mephisto special two in the corner, but he gets pushed up to the special three. How much damage can he get in? Oh, does not look like uh, a yeah. ton, uh, but still yep. a very, very tricky fight. I think he did a pretty great job of uh, keeping that Mephisto under locks. So yeah. Great work yeah, so far. That's a that's a valiant effort on that. Uh, I he, he unfortunately got caught on that reverse intercept from Mephisto. He mm -hmm. kind of backed off and he clipped him on that deck. So that uh, unfortunately, I think that was his undoing right there. Yeah, super unfortunate to get clipped there, but uh, a great pick into a super tough matchup. And uh, we're gonna have to see how Yandao is gonna answer back. Yeah, let's check it out. Yeah, so it's another really tricky matchup. He's going to be uh, going to have to be really careful here. Uh, the cold snap will actually be reflected back onto him. Um, yeah, that special one, totally unblockable and undexable. So hopefully he can uh, find a way to get into this. He's going to get to that, have to get to that special two before he can really uh, get any kind of foothold into this fight. Yeah, and he just needed to slow down his combo just a little bit more to be able to get to that oh, SP2. I don't no. think he was able to take that. Nope. Yeah, the Dark Heart gets to the special uh, three. Yeah, that's actually looking like a wrap. It'll certainly Let's be see. close. Dark Hawk does get a ton of bonus attack from that special three. Oh, so close. If he could just Ooh. launch a special and get right into that adrenaline, and he's able to top back up a little bit, and now he's back in the fight. Yeah, gonna be very tough though. Oh, the auto block. He's doing a ton of reflected damage. Oh, and he gets Ooh. parried there. Yeah, Ooh, the parry rough stuff. Yeah, that's um, tough. Yep. Yeah, not an easy matchup by any means. Uh, great work from Apto, but it does look like, or uh, sorry, great work from Apto on the first fight. Uh, but uh, Yandaus does take round one there. So great work to him. And uh, yeah, we'll have to get into the pick and ban or the pick phase for uh, round two. So heading into the pick phase here, uh, Yandos has a lot of pretty good options here for defenders. I'm really liking the look of that Dragon Man. Uh, I think that'll be a good option here for him. Uh, Apocalypse, another one, doesn't really have a too great of an option. He does have the vision uh, to try and deal with that Apocalypse, but uh, yeah, I'm liking that Dragon Man pick a lot. Um, what do you think, Dave? Yeah, uh, I, I agree. I think Apocalypse might be a bit of a surprise here. I'm not sure he has all that much of a uh, an answer for that outside of Vision. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I'm excited between those two, uh, either Apocalypse or Dragon Man. I'm with you on that, man. Yeah, definitely the, the two most powerful defenders he's got in his arsenal there. Um, yeah, maybe you, you could even be tricky and try to go for an OG Vision, something like that, with that extra power gain. But that is also a very powerful attacker to keep in your arsenal. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like but just like to be able to dragon. flip. Yeah, it's looking like Spite is really tough to deal with, uh, and if you happen to get a passive Vision, uh, that could just be the end of you. Yeah, luckily he doesn't do a ton of damage on his special three, but still, a couple of those, or just even taking any of them, could be the difference. All right, and he does go for the Dragon Man pick. Totally agree with that. I think that's a fantastic pick here. Uh, definitely would argue the strongest. Let's see what Apto returns with. I'm liking a lot the look of the Overseer and the Modok. Yep, Modok is a great choice there. Yeah, a tough defender. Yeah, very tough to deal with on this node. Uh, he does have both the Visions and the Apocalypse. Who could try and deal with them? Goes with the Apocalypse. Yeah, I like that. That's a good solid pick. Yep, yep. And uh, for Dragon Man, who are you thinking here? Uh, I gotta go with Vision. I feel like Vision's the really only power control yep. option there he we has. Go. Yeah, um, yeah that, that's the only option I had. I really feel like he had there. Only power control character he had. Um, so, great pick, but not gonna be an easy fight by any means. He's gonna have to be very careful. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if he's gonna be able to keep him under wraps. It might be a little bit too much power gain in this fight for uh, Vision to deal with. Yeah, well, at least he's got a good head start here. So as he's building up, he can go in and take control uh, immediately. I think I would have gone with the special one mm -hmm. uh, there just to uh, make sure I had the right control. But this also yeah. goes down to show how important it is on your draft picks uh, before getting in the match, uh, what you have available to you in your toolbox. Oh, you know what? That Dragon Man special two is going to be very tough to deal with on this unblockable specials node. Um, 
great recovery so far, but yeah, I, I agree. I like this special one spam a little bit more here on this vision. Um, going to be able to let you keep them a little bit more under wraps, but yeah, just gaining a ton of power here. Um, does take a hit from the oh, special he... one there. Oh no, he's unblockable in the corner. Very good special intercept though. Yeah, absolutely. Taking a little bit of a bank there. It looks like he took a loan and just paid it back with that special attack. <laughs> He's got to be able to dex us. No, he gets clipped in the corner. That means big damage coming from Dragon Man. Absolutely. Yeah, it would have been great to see some wall play there, but uh, I can imagine that was pretty nerve-wracking. Couldn't really get back on his feet after taking a few hits. Got a little discombobulated, and unfortunately, that's how it crumbles. Yeah, you know what? And uh, crumble he did, unfortunately, but uh, he did get a good amount of health off of that Dragon Man. We're going to see if uh, Yandaos can step up at the plate and take this in a clean sweep. So Apocalypse going into the mo more the uh, Apocalypse going into the Modok here. Uh, he will be able to safely play around this super masochism, stun all he likes if he so desires. Um, Going to need to get rid of that dexterity real quick, and though. Yeah, and there is that pesky special one right there uh, in effect. So I, th I think maybe he might take a little bit more of a uh, defensive uh, route while well, trying not to get hit by that special one, uh, but also not activating a uh, spike. So as soon as he builds him up to a special one, just kind of back off and wait for it and see if you can uh, activate that. Yeah, might not oh, be uh, familiar enough with Super Masochism to know that he can safely go for these parries. Um, definitely a little bit of a, a minute interaction that not a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, maybe just trying to avoid the healing as well. Uh, well, actually, I guess the healing would proc. Yeah, um, he's going to have to get a special attack in here pretty soon. Uh, great job dexing the special that time. Yeah. Oh, but there the we spike go. Oh, giving him another, another one, one right into the vet. <laughs> that's, that's pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah, he was having a little bit of trouble with that special one uh, starting out the match, but it looks like he's maybe uh, back on his feet here. Yep. Yeah, he's, hopefully the auto block doesn't pop up here. Oh, no. He still does get the degen in. Oh, I'm coming in with the combo. He's going to have to dex oh, this special too if combo. he wants to take this fight. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one. And he gets it. No problem. Great Impressive. Stuff. Gets the special one in. That'll be some big damage here. Looking like he's getting real close to closing this one out. Oh, just a few more combos and he should be in a really great spot. Oh, just clipped at the oh, end of that special one. Clipped. Oh, man. It took oh, a... rough. Yeah, that special one can be a little tricky to deal with from time to time. Uh, but Doug did get a ton of damage in from that one. Mm. And uh, yeah, it looks like he will take this series and uh, will get a clean sweep against Apto. Uh, great work by Yandaos there. Wow, Yandaos squeezed out a clutch play with this one, taking a sweep of 2-0. That's like the golden ticket in the series here, because previous we had 2-1, uh, and our next match with Satsui and Apto, someone's gonna have to get a 2-0 there if they wanna take this. Yeah, for sure. Um, that 2-0 definitely helps a lot, and uh, great bounce back after that first series too. Very close fight against Setsui, but bringing it back against Apto. So um, excellent work so far by Yandaos, and we're gonna have to see if the other players can answer back. All right, let's have a look. All right, here we have our rematch with Setsui and Apto. I know they're both Pretty excited to play against each other, so let's check out these bands, starting out with that Penny band that we see in almost every single match. Yeah, for sure. Great to see these guys back in the head-to-head -head again. A repeat of last year, one of the most hyped fights we had. Um, yeah, that Penny band getting it out of there. Uh, that Dragon ba Man band, maybe not wanting to deal with that one again. Maybe couldn't find the answer he wanted in his roster, so just eliminating the problem. Is that a Dragon problem. Band? A dragon band. That might be a dragon band, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, looks like he's going to be going for the Ebony Ma as his last band here. Um, all right. Yeah, all very good bands. Uh, I think all of those are super tough defenders to deal with. And if you don't have the right answer to that power game, that dragon man is definitely a huge threat. I agree. Yeah, love seeing the Penny Ban again too. Um, would love to see her at some point, but she is obviously a very powerful defender and a very tricky attacker uh, with some good utility. Uh, we even see her banned over on Satsui's side as well, uh, along with the Modok. 
Uh, yeah, well, we saw Modoc was pretty problematic, so that is probably a very good call on that ban. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we see the ghost pick here early for Setsui. Um, interesting to, or I'll be interested to see how he does with that one. Uh, gonna be a tough matchup with that spite, but uh, he was able to get some pretty clutch plays with it before. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I find interesting is the penny bands are all coming uh, instinctively because they haven't seen anybody else play and they've never seen her played in this mode. They're just like, get that out of here. Yeah, for sure. Everyone's a little scared of the little girl, and she is pretty terrifying when she's got that big robot with her. Um, speaking of some other scary dudes, we see the Mojo and Void pick here on Apatos' side. Um, Mojo, again, a very powerful character. Got to be really careful around that one as a defender. Void, great on both defense and attack, um, but uh, answered back by Setsui with some powerful picks as well. Yeah, absolutely. We've got our Mysterio, which we already know can be passive at times uh, and also very, very powerful. And mm -hmm. we've seen even a Sasquatch not even taken down uh, by uh, some some of his own counters. So he yeah. is pretty resilient on this node. Yeah, Sasquatch is a very powerful defender. Uh, the healing coming in very clutch and that damage resist making it even tougher. Um, curious to see what Apto answers back with here. Love the Terex pick. And of course, that vision crazy powerful in this format i agree yeah that's gonna be a very powerful defender right there we've already seen terax tear it up uh and uh and oh, we'll see we it have... again on both sides <laughs> oh wow look at that yeah and we have a doom here but uh not gonna do too much good with terax yeah he will be able to ignore, ignore the armor breaks but doom won't be able to deal with his power at all so he's gonna have to be real careful with that one Possibly a doable mancha, but a uh, very tricky one at the very least. Uh, we see the Overseer coming out for Apto again. Uh, we saw him pick this earlier, but not uh, play it. So be very curious to see if he does use it this time around. Yeah, I really want to see how he performs in this mode. Oh, and we've got ourselves a Mr. Negative on board. Yeah, Mr. Negative, another very fresh face to the contest. Uh, can be very tricky if you don't have the right people to deal with. Those reverse controls definitely going to slip you up, especially when there's stuff like unblockable specials. Absolutely. Uh, and that can, that can spell doom for you if you aren't timing it just right. Uh, now, we do have a uh, Human Torch here. I wonder if he's picking that uh, for that Sasquatch. Yeah, you know what? That sounds like a great matchup for the Sasquatch. A very powerful thing. Unfortunately, he won't be able to use the pre-fight, um, but a couple other scary defenders here for Setsui in that bishop uh, and a very powerful attacker in the vision. We see Setsui opt in for the Terax as his first pick. A uh, very tricky defender and not a lot of great options for Apto here. Yeah, uh, I'm interested to see what the first pick here is going to be. Uh, I think they're just going to roll out with Terax uh, right off the bat, uh, just kind of already knowing how he performs. Uh, I think that's going to be first out of the gate. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, he does have the Void who might help with the Terax, but still uh, going to be very hard for either of these guys to answer the Terax pick. And looks like Apto will be going with it as his defender as well. No, oh, we have a Void. Uh, I th think I can see that. Uh, I mean, maybe he might get lucky uh, getting those petrifies early. Yep. We'll have to see. Yeah, definitely going to help him deal with that spite note if he can, uh, or to try and play keep away a bit and just let those dots tick away on the Terax. Um, but still not the ideal counter by any means. So very, very tough. And um, yeah, curious to see how Setsui tries to answer this Terax as well. I mean, maybe he might just try to damage uh, and just go ghost and see how much damage he can do. That is a class disadvantage, but... Uh, yeah, it's going to be very uh, tough with the armor break stopping ghost's phase as well. Uh, maybe he could try to DPS with Bishop or something, but goes for the Mysterio. Going to be a very tricky matchup. Well, I'm very excited to see how that one turns out. Yeah, I'm very curious about that. <laughs> so, Void here... Um, yeah, like you said before, he's going to have to try and rely on being very lucky with those petrifies. Um, yeah. Oh, man, he's getting tons oh, of very... armor. gets opened up. Wow. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, it's pretty rough bait, but he did get lucky with those petrifies. Yeah, no kidding. Two petrifies in the first 20 seconds there. Excellent stuff. Great decks there, too. Um, 
Doesn't look like he's running the Willpower Mastery, though, so is missing out on some free healing from those armor breaks. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I really did like the fact that he was able to avoid that reverse intercept, but he just opened himself up a little bit there mm -hmm. uh, right afterwards, so he did avoid the damage. I think he would be taken down by now, but hey, look, he is uh, making a little bit of a stride here. So if he can get himself another opening, I think he'd be in good shape. Oh, great intercept there. He needed to land that. If he blocked that, there's a great chance he could have just fallen. Um, but yeah, great stuff so far. Getting back into this fight, getting some great control. Uh, but again, really gonna need those petrifies. Uh, yeah, dude, just be those, uh, that triple backdraft intercept right there was absolutely clutch. And he's going for it again. He's oh. got another triple, but just does not survive the rock field. Unfortunate. It looks like he just got his stride there right at the end. Just couldn't stick it out. Yeah, unfortunately he gets clipped there, but honestly a great fight from Apto. Really bringing it back and doing a ton of damage, taking down half of Terex's health there. Um, I think he did masterfully there, and it's going to be very hard for Tetsui to answer back, but uh, let's see if he can. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so this is uh, probably the most interesting pick I've seen. I'm trying to see if yeah. I maybe missed something and to see like, <laughs> what is happening here. Yeah, well, miss is the name of the game. Hopefully Mysterio will be able to trigger that miss a bunch. I'm thinking maybe he can go for the special ones on the Mysterio here and use that to reflect some of the rock field damage back at this Terax. Um, unfortunately, lands a parry there. But yeah, these armor breaks shutting down a lot of Mysterio's uh, duration on those special attack phases. Um, very, very difficult matchup here for the Mysterio. Um, yeah, throws the special two there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, yeah, you know what? Uh, by the way, props on picking up on the miss thing, because uh, that was actually pretty genius. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm fortunate there for uh, Setsui that he... Uh, Mysterio is a metal character, which means he's not going, be, going to be able to power control Terex at all, which means that special two left him with not much, and he wasn't even able to get any misses out of it. So a little bit of a missed opportunity, if you will. Yeah, yeah, I agree. He didn't uh, get any misters either. <laughs> and it doesn't look like he's going to get a win in round one either. Round one goes to Apto. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to see if Setsui can come back to make this the best of three. Yeah, absolutely. Let's check it out. All right, so getting into the defender picks. Apto first here. I feel like he's got to go with the mojo. Maybe he can get the, the quick and dirty uh, mojo fight in goes with the overseer though he goes with the overseer huh. interesting i mean he really he, he doesn't really know what happened before mm -hmm. uh but i would think that he would want to clinch a win right here right here and i I, yeah. I can't imagine someone being harder than mojo yeah i feel like mojo is unequivocally one of the best defenders in the contest unless you have the perfect counter to deal with it which uh looking at setsui's roster Maybe that vision can deal with it, but not a lot of great options. Uh, very tough here. And we see the Sasquatch come in as Setsui's defender. Apto deciding if he wants to go in with the vision or go in with the human torch. Uh, I would say both are very good options. And um, yeah, I'm not sure which one I would rather go with here. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, I, th I think he's, uh, I think he looked at the two and said, you know what? As soon as that Wrath of Tanarak comes in, I think it's going to be a bit of a problem for him to handle yeah. with uh, vision. So maybe Fair he enough. went with that, uh, with that Human Torch pick, yeah. uh, just kind of knowing that that's how that works in the meta, and he's just going to melt him. Mm -hmm. But let's see if he actually does melt him because uh, Sasquatch has been, uh, he's a kind tough of uh, subverting. Yeah, subverting expectations there, man. Yeah, and we're going to get right into it here, watching this Human Torch try and melt away at the Sasquatch. I do love Human Torch's interaction with the Super Masochism here. He will reflect those incinerates back on himself, giving him smolder charges and letting him just land longer incinerates. Yeah, I really love that. Uh, th that extra form of strategy, really got to know your champion. That's a really great point that you brought out there with the smolders. Yeah, super tough matchup still, though. Um, Sasquatch going to be getting tons of damage resist because he has no way to shut down the, the um, uh, aggression charges and uh, also going to be gaining a ton of health from this super masochism if he doesn't have the despair mastery on. Um, uh, jumps right in, barely takes any damage uh, off, of, uh, off of 
Sasquatch there and just eats a uh, special three. Uh, yeah. But uh, he seems to have survived it. That's a lot more health than I was expecting. Uh, so let's see if we can make a comeback here. Yeah, that class advantage definitely coming in clutch here, helping him with that one. Um, ooh, that's a lot of power that Sasquatch is getting, though. Enters that Wrath of Tanarak very early, and that's going to be a big special three coming in again. Just Sasquatch gaining a ton of power here. Very difficult defender to deal with. Yeah, uh, man, he's really logging in those special threes. Yeah, it's uh, lots of special. Ooh, he gets clipped by the heavy. You know what? <laughs> Actually kind of helped them there because he didn't trigger Dex off of the first hit, so a little bit less power. But yeah, this Sasquatch is just healing so much off of these um, incinerates being applied by Human Torch. Yeah, I can see it. Oh man, that's really tough. But it looks like he's making some headway here. Do you think maybe we can... He can turn this around. He's doing some pretty great melting damage here. Yeah, he's going to have to be careful. That Wrath of Tanarak is getting to the point where he can close huge healing coming out there. Yeah, I think Setsui's definitely got that recovery mastery mi maxed out. And he's got the willpower going. Uh, this Wrath of Tanarak's triggering here. It's going to be very tricky in the corner. Great dexing, though. Great special intercept as well. Oh, he gains a lot of health there. Yeah. Oh, Wrath of Tanarak is rough. In the corner, oh, oh man. Oh, big heavy attack from the Sasquatch to end that one. Yeah, that healing oh, just man. seemed to be too much for Torch to deal with. Yeah, Super Masochism actually healed him up a lot. Uh, it, it almost <laughs> it almost would have been better just to play keep away and maybe take a few hits there at the end. Yeah. Uh, but I think he probably still would have ended up healing him because he would have taken that incinerate off of those hits. Yeah, uh, that's a tough one, man. Maybe a yeah. few more points in the Despair Mastery, but uh, looks like a very tough matchup either way. Great setup so far by Satsui. Let's see if he can capitalize on it. Yeah. So I love this ghost pick here. I think this is a super smart pick. Uh, if you aren't familiar with Overseer, he has a very similar auto block to Medusa, where he will actually only trigger auto block on the second hit of a combo, and he will parry you on it. Meaning, with somebody like Ghost, you can hit them once, dash away, and then oh. rinse and repeat. Yeah, yeah uh, he took a uh, masochism parry there, mm -hmm. uh, and it looks like it kind of took him out of his flow. It looks like he had a really great thing going on there, and uh, now he's got to kind of reset. Yeah, it's uh, going to be really tough here too. Those buffs on Ghost are going to consistently be giving this guy power. Wow, great special Ooh. intercept there. That's some huge damage. Yeah, he got a little bit lucky there uh, with a, with a little bit of passiveness. Uh, he was able to get that off before uh, Overseer got his uh, special three. Kind of giving him a free hit there. Yeah, for sure. Um, you never know if that special three is just going to be the end of days as well. So great job getting some extra damage in here. Oh, does get parried oh. there. Can he get another special off the stun? Just times out. Oh, the resist on the heavy attack. Oh, he got it. Wow, he gets the special attack off again. He's uh, making a great comeback here. This is not an easy fight by any means. And uh, yeah, just maybe gonna try and get some more damage. And wow, another special yeah. intercept there. Look uh, at that. Satsui is uh, is surviving here. Is he gonna survive? Nah, it's looking like game over. Those Hail Mary specials might have been enough to make the difference, though. Excellent stuff there. And, uh, yeah, it does look like it will be. Satsui will take round two. Excellent work on his part. Those special intercepts coming in clutch. Great showing yeah. by both players in round two there. That brings us into 1-1 one, one each. So we're going to have to uh, see if the who's going to come out on top now. All right into the defender picks here. What do you think in Setsui should pick here? I'm leaning towards the bishop myself. Uh, I mean, you could do something with Doom here uh, because yeah. he's, uh, he's not an easy defender either. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Doom very tough to deal with. Uh, those These special ones are already unblockable, but it does mean that you're pretty much guaranteed to be giving him more power with the Spite Master or uh, node. Um, very tough on both sides, uh, or yeah, both specials to deal with there. Um, yeah, not yeah, sure. Yeah, the special too as well, because uh, it, it, he doesn't have to be in the ore to get unblockable. Mm -hmm. So you've got to really be on your game. Yeah, for sure. Does go with the bishop though. Uh, yeah, I think that's a great pick. Uh, he's gonna be tough. Yeah, the mojo comes out. 
that's going to be really tough to deal with. I like the Doom pick. I think he can try and deal with it, but he's going to have to be really careful. Uh, that Mojo Special 3 is something I think a lot of people don't consider and can definitely make you slip up. But uh, yep. yeah, first we're going to have to see if Apto can deal with uh, Satsui's Bishop with his vision. All right. Okay, let's see. Can he lock him in the corner and get that good vision gameplay here? Yeah, for sure. That's definitely the aim of the game. That is how you achieve the 2020 vision gameplay. Um, oh, lands a parry there. A little oh. tough. And uh, gets opened up. Oh, he's going to need to land a special attack here. You do not want this bishop throwing a special one. Excellent special intercept there. Oh, and he's ready for another one. And he's got himself open here. Nice. And sends that down. Now, he's got a special one ready to go here in just a little while. Oh, great. And I punish. love that. Yeah, absolutely. So it looks like he's definitely favoring these special twos. Uh, curious if he goes for it. Yeah, it goes for the special one. Totally think that's the right play here. Make sure this bishop just never gets to throw a special attack and keep him totally on lock. Yeah, it's going in. He's not backing off too much and making himself uh, work over to the corner. Now, what's really great about uh, interrupting those heavies is that you're actually closing that distance off faster than you would if you were to dex both and then attack. Yeah, totally agree. You're uh, you're using a maximum amount of that timer, which is something always at play and um, still keeping totally in control of this fight. Bishop has yet to throw a special attack, so showing us how to play Vision like a beast. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. And and just to, just to look at the skill, how long it took for him to get over to the wall to show how difficult it is to get a champion over there. Uh, it, it, that was a really great thing to watch right there. Sometimes you get it fast, but he really worked his way over little by little. Yeah, and he's really not missing any opportunity here. Those punishes on the heavy attacks are a very dangerous thing to do if you go for uh, the first hit punish, and he has landed all of them. He's been absolutely rinsing this bishop here. So far, a absolutely great fight. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? We've seen that throughout the series. Uh, that there's very, very few points where a double hit or multi-hit heavy isn't punished after the first hit. Yeah, that's something that these players have definitely got going, and uh, Apto has got this round going so far. Excellent work so far taking that bishop down. Not an easy opponent to deal with. I agree. All right, so we are down to the last fight. Let's see what we got here. So we have Doom versus Mojo. This is by no means an easy fight, but I do like the pick of Doom here. He's able to very safely trigger that super masochism with his shocks, and he's not going to be taking any damage back, so that means his parry is open to use. Yeah, absolutely, and he's gonna go for that power steal right here, which puts him in a really great position. Uh, do you think he's gonna go for the full on rotation here? It does look like he's going to be going for the Doom rotation with Special 3 here. I do think just spamming Special 1s for that power control might be a little bit safer, but uh, hopefully it pays out for him. Yeah, uh, wow, he went right into the Special 3 here. That's actually pretty interesting. I, I thought he probably would have tried to build him up a little bit over Special 2 in order to pull off the full rotation. It is a very tricky thing to do against a mojo here, though, because as you saw there, he will push you to the other side of the screen, uh, meaning you can't get your full seven or eight hit combo off off of the Doom passive stun with special three. Um, downside we saw there, too, is he got that fury buff, which means mojo is activating spite and he raced to that special three. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We are coming in to see who takes this. All right, looking like Apto's taking this one 2-1, uh, which he does win this series, but unfortunately, because of all the ties, everyone got two, but Yandows is the only one to sweep all the way through with a 2-0, which makes him the winner. Yeah, excellent work to Yandows. Excellent work to all of our players, each of them taking a series here. But yeah, like you touched on there, in a tie, we do go down to whoever lost the least rounds. And in this case, it was Yandows. So congratulations to him for taking the Asia and Oceania semifinals. Now, we get to talk with our runner-ups. So first up, we have Satsui no Hado. Dude, congratulations on getting here. Uh, amazing set of fights that you had there. Uh, those look super difficult, and uh, just wanted to know, how do you feel about your performance? 
Well, I tried my best, as you can see, given the <laughs> circumstances. Um, but it could have gone a wee bit better, I guess, because uh, I managed to review my own footage of the final fight against, I think, uh, Doctor Doom against Mojo. I had him, actually, that fight. One SP3, could have locked him, had him, but uh, because, you know, after Mojo's SP3, he gets pushed back way, mm -hmm. way, way back to his corner of the screen, so I had to dash in and waste precious milliseconds, couldn't do the medium light medium to lock it in. Instead, he recovered from his stun and he attacked me, so that was it. But if I had just done a double medium instead of a medium light medium, I reckon, not that I'm saying, but chances are I would have won that final match. Wanted to talk to you about your uh, your Ghost and Hitmonkey fight. I uh, actually enjoyed that fight. Uh, and it looks like you just kind of hit a snag there with that super masochism reflecting that stun back on you. Like, what were you thinking in that moment? Well, I was thinking at first, okay, Ghost is gonna do really well when mm -hmm. I first saw the matchup. And as the fight proceeded, when at the initial part, the fight start, he started to back away into his own corner. I was like, what the hell is happening here? <laughs> I think uh, the pick itself was really good. I like the... The idea of it there, you know, you can use Ghost anti-evade into hit monkey. So even after you throw a special, he's still not going to, you know, dodge uh, away and try to punish you. I, you also picked Ghost into Maestro, which I thought was really interesting. Um, where I, I, at first I was like, oh my goodness, I feel like this is a horrible matchup. And then I remembered you can just do the, the one hit and run away. And I thought that was really, really smart. So I'm just curious of, um, yeah, kind of like what was going through your head when you picked that and um yeah again props for a, a really smart matchup there too you hit it right on the head <laughs> that's right uh exactly that was the the plan going in just to do one hit and then just back away play mm -hmm. possum against him uh if i had to if i had to eat an sp3 so be it i mm -hmm. fingers crossed i didn't die so i managed to get in quite a bit of damage to mm -hmm. win that fight however i to be honest with you I forgot that he could actually block the second follow-up basic attack. So that's mm. where you saw me get stunned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I, uh... I totally forgot how to fight him. Seriously. <laughs> really, he's he's yeah. a pretty new character too. Uh, again, not a character we saw a lot of uh, people um, using or looking at too much before. But I, I saw it and I was like, you know what? That's a really great pick. I'd love to see more of it. And um, But I thought the, the ghost counter there was really, really smart. And you handled it very well. Um, and I... Uh, I saw that special three come in and I was like, oh no, but you came back and you got so much more damage in that fight. So I got to give you props on that one too. Yeah, I mean, as yeah, long as I'm still man. kicking, might as well just, you know, before I go down, take him down with me. Well, Satsui no Hado, thank you once again for coming out here and sharing those thoughts with us. Dude, again, congratulations for making it this far and hope to see you next year. All right, hopefully three times the charm, baby. <laughs> Always a pleasure. That's right. I'll see you guys hopefully next year as well. All right. Up next with some hard-fought matches, Apto is here with us to tell us how he felt about playing the game, the format that we have, and how he felt about his fights. Apto, welcome. 그 이번 쇼다운 같은 경우에 작년이랑 되게 다른 방식으로 진행됐는데요. 굉장히 이제 흥미롭고 재밌었습니다. So this year's showdown went fairly differently from last year's and it, it was very interesting and I very much enjoyed it. Awesome, glad to hear that you uh, enjoy the new game mode. Uh, curious, I saw you pick uh, Overseer there and I think that's the first time we've seen somebody pick that character. Um, just curious on your thoughts of him and how good he is in this game mode. Uh, 제, 어, 제가 생각하기로는 이제 오버스티어 기술 중에 이제 어 스페셜 어택을 쓸 때마다 이제 자동 방어를 자동 방어할 수 있는 이제 기술이 있거든요. 저는 이제 이게 되게 까다로울 줄 알았는데 사쏘이 선수가 되게 잘해줬네 제 생각 제 생각보다. Yeah, so um, with the overseer, there uh, one of the special uh, attacks contain a um, automatic def defense. And you know, I thought it was going to be tricky, but um, uh, player Setsui did an amazing job. Nice. I have a question uh, about uh, your fight with Sasquatch uh, using Human Torch. Uh, when we were watching uh, Setsui play, 
I kind of figured maybe you had the advantage there of uh, having Torch going up against a Mystic. Uh, what can you, uh, what kind of insight can you give us about that fight? Yeah, 저도 이게 당연히 제가 이길 줄 알았거든요, 이걸. 근데 막상 싸우고 보니까는 이제 회복을 3만, 4만씩 하다 보니까 되게 끔찍했어요. You know, that's what I thought too at first. Um, I thought it was going to be, uh, you know, a, a smooth play, but you know, the 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 um, HP restoration, uh, it, it was it, it was very difficult to deal with. Now, uh, one final question for you here: uh, What message do you have for Yen Dao's uh, for taking the win here? Oh, 이번에 결승 결승 진출한 게 되게 결승 진출한 걸 되게 축하드리고요. 그리고 이번에도 작년처럼 아시아 지역에서 우승자가 나왔으면 좋겠습니다. Yeah, my hearty congratula uh, congratulations to uh, to uh, Yan Dao's and you know just like last year, I hope that uh, we have a winner from the uh, Asia uh, region. Well, here we have a special moment for those of you that remember last year's Summoner Showdown. You remember that there was a pretty heartfelt moment that had most of the community swearing they were cutting onions at the same time. But we <laughs> now have a reunion of Satsui no Hado and Apto to share their mutual respect. Hello, Apto. How are you doing, my old friend? It's been one year. Hey, 오랜만이에요, Satsui 선수. 오래된 친구처럼. 오래된 친구를 만난 것처럼 되게 반갑고요. 그리고 오늘의 대결을 되게 기다렸습니다. Very happy to see you, Satsui. Uh, you're my old friend, and uh, I was very looking forward to today's match. Likewise, likewise. I remember the awesome 네, matches we had uh, last year, and I was so happy uh, when I saw that you and I had made the semis this year as well. Um, 네. Yep. So I was really looking forward to our fights. 저도 사스 선수가 이제 리더보드에 이름 있는 걸 보고 진짜 방방 뛰었습니다. Yeah, you know, I felt the same. I saw your name on the leaderboard and man, I, I was very very happy. Can I ask you a question, Abdo? Personal question. 어, 질문 하나만 해 볼게요. 슈. 무엇이든지 물어보세요. Yeah, I ask anything. All yours. All right. You know what happened last year, right? So, I mean, honestly, were you were you out for revenge this year against me? <laughs> 네, 거의 그냥 며칠 동안 계속 생각만 했어요 이 대결을. Yeah, you bet. You know, I was I was really only thinking about this match for the past, you know, many days. It's it's all that's been on my mind. Yep, yep. I kind of expected that because you know. I kind of felt, to be honest, I kind of felt sorry for taking the match from you from last year's showdown. So, as they say, you know, revenge is a dish best served cold. And it was cold indeed. <laughs> Sub-zero cold. Yeah, you have no reason to, uh, you know, feel bad about last, you know, last year's match. You were an amazing player. Uh, you played just incredible. Likewise, likewise. This year, you put in an outstanding performance as well. And I felt it was, in a way, reparations for what I did to you last year. But enough of that. Tell me, are, you, are we going to meet each other next year? Third time's the charm, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right on, man. Right on. I think in 어, 한 번도 못 이기고 다 졌는데 올해는 그래도 한번 이겼거든요. 아마 내년에는 두 경기 다 이기지 않을까요? Yeah, you know, last year I didn't really win any um, match, but uh, this this time I won one, and hopefully next time I will win two. <laughs> hopefully one of us will go all the way. <laughs> third time, third time has got to be the charm. Third time lucky. <laughs> 우승할 때까지 안 멈출 겁니다. Absolutely, I'm not stopping until I win. That's right. All right, well, let's well. go for it. Let's go for it, bro. Let's go for it. <laughs> great job, yeah, both you guys. Yeah, great job, very, both you guys. Very, very awesome. Thank you guys for uh, coming together and sharing this moment with us. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next year for that third time being the charm.
And without further ado, we have our finalist, our winner of the series for Asia and Oceania, Yandows, my man. Congratulations on this whole win. This, uh, that was some pretty impressive writing that you had right there. Now, I wanted to get your thoughts on how you thought you performed, even with the win. Well, first of all, I, I believe I'm still in in a shock. Uh, I don't know how to react seriously. I I really have no idea that I got into the finals. Well, congratulations. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've done it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, I guess I guess um beginner beginner luck works this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about is I saw you draft Arcus, and um, I wanted to know if you were planning on using, I saw him use him against that Darkhawk, did you want to use him as both an attacker and defender, or just as a defender, because he is very powerful as both? I wanted to use him as a defender initially, but for some reason, yeah, I when I saw Darkhawk, uh, it was like natural, natural instinct, I just picked uh, I, I chose over uh, Arcus to 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 you know try my luck. So yeah. Yeah. Well, great work there. Um. Yeah. yeah. And again, congratulations on clo closing out that uh, the series here. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Absolutely. Now I saw you had a little bit of trouble uh, going up against that Terax with Doc Voodoo. Uh, can you walk us through that fight just a little bit? Well, I was I was thinking about. You know, using the you know, to to nullify whatever to to place basically the 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 DOA on him. So I was like hoping to convert to more debuffs. Uh, I don't think I went it went well for that match. I was expecting to die much earlier. Somehow, for rather, I just managed to last a little bit longer than I thought. Oh well, I I thought that that uh, that for that part uh, to counter off the. The his, his uh the, the damage from his the armor blade in uh, armor blade breaks. I thought I could regen a bit from from the start to to tank off that that damage. Uh. So yeah. Another fight we saw you take that looked pretty tough, uh, but you did pretty well in was uh, Apocalypse versus Modok. Uh, walk me through a little bit of that fight. Well, I was hoping that I could use Falcon against him, uh, but uh, uh, unfortunately, it didn't. It didn't came came out to my choice. So, well, I was just thinking that, uh, well, Apocalypse would be a good tanker to just tank off whatever damage. Uh, I pretty much tried to dex his SP1, but uh, I, I I suppose I missed almost, uh, I, I failed to dex uh, almost all of it. Uh, I, I got, <laughs> yeah, I think I got panic as well. And uh, for mm -hmm. some reason, it, the phone doesn't doesn't respond to, to my my input, so... Oh well, I was just I was just thinking basically, uh, just tough it out. So yeah, I'm bashing through mm -hmm. as much as I could, and oh well, and yeah, <laughs> it bring me to, um, I mean, it bring, brought me the results. So okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, a very a hard earned victory still, nonetheless. Uh, another thing I want to ask you, speaking on the topic of having that falcon in your deck, uh, walk me through a little bit of the strategy you had while building your deck. Well, I have. Basically, I have no experience in such competition. I didn't really expect to proceed this far, so I was thinking like, um, try a good mixture of um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the attackers, uh, a good mixture of the uh, uh, strong attackers, plus some of the defenders. I can thought of. I could thought of. Uh, I thought of. I other than bringing in uh, those known tough defenders, I brought in a few where. Uh, they, they have more pro uh, projectiles as their special attacks, because I was thinking that uh, well, if the um, if with the spike buff for the node, mm -hmm. if is if all specials are unblock uh, unblockable, basically those with uh, multiple projectiles will be uh, harder to evade. So mm -hmm. that's one of my strategies. <laughs> okay, I have one last question for you. Now this being a brand new format and nobody really having any experience with this format what kind of learnings do you think you can take with you into the finals like what would you do differently well if i could do things differently this time i will make sure that i will be more alert you know to look out for the uh, the countdown timer because uh apparently well, 
for the during the semis, I I missed that table a couple of times. I didn't realize that I have to pick a defender or attacker from my end already. I was like waiting, waiting, and ended up with, oh, I got to choose already. So yeah, I think I have to be more alert. Thank you once again for coming and speaking with us and talking to us about your experience mm -hmm. and what your plans were for this series. Uh, you did absolutely fantastic. Huge congratulations to you. And uh, we'll see you in the finals. All right. Well, there you have it. Another series of fantastic fights in the bin. John, what did you think? Yeah, I thought it was a great showing by all of our competitors here. Really close. Sad we don't get to see uh, any of our returning members end up in the finals, but congratulations to our finalists. And uh, yeah, really great stuff from all of our members in the Asia and Oceania region here. Absolutely, I agree. And we're going to see our top three in the finals. So make sure that you tune in to the next Summoner Showdown. You don't want to miss it. Now, if you like the video and you want to see more, go ahead and click subscribe, like, comment, and share. And remember, stay dorky, and we'll catch y'all in the Battleground.